we finally getting down to the nitty gritty with these stories. As y'all can see by the title, we're going to talk about my mom's attempted murder. This story time will include actual photos, trigger warning if anyone has dealt with anything similar. Um, so I'm just letting y'all know, disclaimer, before we get into it. So just to let y'all know, I'm not covering pictures. I mean, I'm not covering faces. I'm not covering names either. Um, anyone who is a suspect in this story time... I am going to be revealing names um, just simply because it's public record anyways. So before we get into the story, if you are new to my channel, pause, bitch, pause. Uh, first of all, thank you. And also, hit the subscribe button because you don't want to miss any of these story times. Girl, I got a lot, a lot more, a lot more shit to discuss. Like, y'all think this shit is it? Bitch, it ain't. It, it ain't, ho. It, it ain't. Okay, so just sit back, relax, hit that subscribe button. Also, hit that thumbs up button. That way, I can know that you like these stories and I can keep these stories going on. And let's just, you know, be a part of the crew at this point. So, I need you to be in tune. I, I need all of y'all to just be on the same page and just be subscribed and stop watching from the outside and come on in okay <laughs> so y'all my last story time we left off of me uh, finally leaving the mental facility and how that crazy ass experience was for the course of 72 hours or so in my life <laughs> so the mental facility situation happened 20 2018 yeah um october the end of october like the october 27 28th some shit like the weekend of that that day i remember because it was around my grandma's birthday but of 2018 yeah i keep getting the, the years mixed up but yeah it happened of october the end of october of 2018 and now um we are moving into february give or take ish of 2019 now at this time i had still not been talking to my mom um, my mom had actually been communicating with my grandma though she was in jail for was she in jail at this time she was in jail for a brief moment but because my mom actually ended up meeting some type of guy i don't remember where she met him at um but she ended up meeting some type of guy and his name is al <laughs> it's so close to his real name but i'm just gonna say al because you'll probably see it in the screenshots but my grandma had been communicating with her and she was telling uh, my grandma will always like talk to me and tell me how my mom doing because she knew that I wasn't actually talking to her but she was still giving me updates and I wouldn't mind it like I mean it's my mom at the end of the day just because I'm not talking to her don't mean like I don't want to know that she's okay or whatever so she would like tell me different things that was going on she would tell me like you know she had met this guy and they were staying in him in Louisiana in some type of RV didn't have any electricity at all so I didn't know at the time I didn't I thought that was kind of weird I'm like how the fuck they ain't got no electricity but okay they they live in real country and I was just like okay my mom at this point she's at her lowest like she don't have shit so I was just it wasn't surprising to me that my mom was living in those type of conditions because I mean she didn't have anything but my grandma was like sending her money and stuff to help her out um, every now and then. Um, she was there for her. I will, I will say that she was there for her for this time. And my mom was also there for my grandma. And y'all know my mom and my grandma have, have a toxic relationship. Like throughout, the, if you are keeping up with these stories, like y'all know my mom had always had it out for my grandma for whatever reason. And you know, they their relationship wasn't really stable just like ours. Actually, their relationship was actually more unstable than my relationship with her was which was weird because you know i wasn't actually talking to her because again at this time i still had that restraining order on my mom as well too so we cannot forget that because y'all know right before i gave birth to junior in 2018 i had got a restraining order on my mama so let's keep that in mind this restraining order was for two years so we was just passing up the first year at this point i believe so my grandma even at one point had allowed my mama to come down where she was my grandma was living in laplace louisiana at the time and she was uh, she had to have some type of surgery on her wrist or something like that i can't or her heart no i'm sorry it was her heart 
they were doing something on on it or whatever and she needed assistance and help obviously after having the surgery so my mom was nice enough to come down to leave where she was and go to my grandma and um spend like a week and or if not longer with her after she had that surgery and she really helped my grandma a lot like everything i was really happy that you know it was it was like that like you know even though at the time i still wasn't talking to my mama but i just knew that she was doing good outside of me and that was good to know you know what i'm saying and my grandma would also like here and there or kind of almost them every time i talked to her would throw some hints in there like yeah you know you should um you know talk to your mama one day or i can't wait till y'all are able to have a conversation and this and that at this time my mom still hadn't seen my third son that i gave birth to she hadn't seen me in over a year and you know it just time had been coming by but i still wasn't trying to hear that shit i'm just like mm -hmm, yeah you're right grandma yeah we're gonna talk someday but right now it's not the motherfucking time <laughs> i say it like that but i did say it like that in so many words and um come february of 2019 gabe and i we finally get married and my grandma you know she ref relayed the message to my mom and she of course my mom relayed a message to me through her even though technically she wasn't supposed to do that because of the, the restraining order but you know I, I ain't no bitch or whatever I'm her daughter like you know she want to congratulate me that's fine so my mom did congratulate me through my grandma and everything was good like it was kind of like it felt kind of weird and sad that my mom wasn't there to like experience it even though I didn't have like an actual wedding um, we just did the old fashioned way, went to the courthouse and you know, whatever. Um, but my mom still wasn't there, you know what I'm saying? She still wasn't able to like experience that moment with me, like my first time getting married. Just because I'm not literally walking down the, down the aisle, don't mean I don't, I don't want my mom to like still be there to experience that, even if it is to just be there to celebrate it with me, you know what I'm saying? Which it was like sad because I'm just like, damn, like. I ain't got a daddy to congratulate me or to walk me down the aisle if I did decide to have a motherfucking wedding and I don't have my mama either like that just kind of kind of sucks you know what I'm saying like anyways I don't want to get emotional but um y'all look I ain't cried in a motherfucking video um in a long time so what is the fuck is going on like this shit I've been married how long girl chill out not me trying to pump myself up not to cry <laughs> So boom, I got married. I got married in um, February 7th, 2019. Um, I'll post a picture of the day I got married actually. I was like gaining weight at that time because I was on my little weight gain journey. I was, you know, happy because I was finally like not depressed anymore. I had, you know, I was like really like determined to not lose them away so i was really gaining weight at that point you know i fucking lost it but it is what it is at least i ain't in the hospital or no mental facility <laughs> but um that happened and then come june 11th to be exact i find out i'm pregnant again um totally unintentional i mean <laughs> I don't know what I thought. I thought because probably, I know what the fuck I thought. I thought maybe because I was still breastfeeding. Well, at that time, I kind of slowed down breastfeeding really because honestly, after the mental facility situation, like my breast milk really didn't go back to normal. Like the doctor fucking lied to me. But I was still able to breastfeed just a little bit, maybe like maybe two months of a little bit uh, or so afterwards, um, I'll say. And oh, yeah, a bitch found out she was pregnant. <laughs> and I was super, super sad. And y'all know, or if y'all don't know, um, but now you're about to find out. Um, I was like debating on having an abortion because I'm like, yo, I cannot have another child. Like, this is not happening. I can't motherfucking do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I ain't doing it. Um, and then I'm like, damn, like, I'm really like think about this shit i ain't got my mama around like i this is a, a life changing that situation like i feel like i need my mama i don't i can't just rely on my thoughts forever like, i mean i can but like damn like i've been doing this since i don't know how long like sometimes i want to rely on somebody else like my mom you know what i'm saying so I, that was really like, kind of like a sad situation as well because i felt like that was uh, i felt like that was the time that i needed her that she wasn't there uh, which was unfortunate but you know i got over it um months went by and you know 
my grandma still didn't care for my mom's boyfriend she well i don't i said still didn't care for my mom's boyfriend like i told y'all she didn't care for him in the first place my girl didn't like the boyfriend period and uh, part of the reason why is because he had my mom in a fucking rv with no electricity which i understood that like nigga what the fuck what are you doing who are you and at that time i didn't know really who the fuck the nigga was you know clearly he was a bum but i know the type of situation just as of yet so my, at this time i'm pregnant y'all i'm going through tremendous morning sickness like morning sickness like i've ever never had to experience ever in my life like i've never been sick in a pregnancy in my life to the fact that i have to literally start putting suppositories up my ass like literally y'all i have to put suppository medicine or suppository little pills of my asshole because a bitch was just sick i was sick a lot and there was another type of medication like if you couldn't take it orally which i could take it orally but the oral shit wasn't working so i guess they were like okay well let's just start sticking shit up this bitch ass and see if it works and honestly i ain't just gonna lie to y'all it didn't work it did work it was promethazine um if i'm pronouncing that right no i ain't talking about drink but it's similar to it it sounds like it um but it was some type of medicine that they had me putting in my ass. I don't know why I just started talking about that shit. But, you know, I just had to throw that out there. <laughs> but um, I was super, super sick. But still trying to make it through. And one day my grandma called me. Which, like, telling me some of the things that my mom was going through with this guy. Like, they would get into arguments. And she would, like, call her in the middle of the night. And she would be worried. And then later on, they'll be okay. It was just, like, some weird ass shit. So, right there, I just knew, okay, yeah, this nigga is broke and toxic. Like, how the fuck you got the nerves to be fighting in a motherfucking RV with no electricity? Like, you shouldn't be doing nothing besides sitting there and trying to con preserve energy or heat or air. Because I know it was hot as, as fuck at the time. I know it was hot as fuck at the time because it was in the middle of fucking summer. But one particular night, my grandma called me and was like, I didn't want to disturb you last night. But your mom had called me last night, like, 3 o'clock in the morning and was telling me how Al beat her like literally beat her ass and at that time i didn't know how to what extent it was i'm just thinking like you know a little couple slaps beat beat poop you know what i'm saying like a little whatever i didn't know i just assumed it was just like a little fight a little scuffle whatever it was but my grandma showed me pictures and i'm gonna go ahead and before I post the pictures, I'm going to do another trigger warning. This is triggering. I guess you could say it's graphic. Yeah, it's, it's graphic because it's, it's gross. Um, but this is this is my mom. And it's how her face was after um, this fight with L. And I'm going to go ahead and enter the clip now. So yeah, y'all. This is how my mom's face looked. He broke her nose. Well, at the time, my mom told me he broke her nose. It was horrible. And after I saw those pictures everything everything left like any anger any hatred any anything ill feelings that i had towards my mom at that moment like everything went the fuck away and i immediately asked my grandma for her number um uh, i was started to um write my mom on her facebook on her instagram like i had her blocked on everything at the time and i unblocked her from everything just to message her i'm like are you okay are you okay because at the time my grandma said that she hadn't heard from her at the time like she hadn't heard from her since um whenever whenever she initially told her what happened because my mom had a phone but i don't think she was able to use it unless she was on wi-fi i don't know it's some weird shit i don't remember but it wasn't like a type of situation where my grandma could just call her and just like you know hear from her right away so i was really really like nervous y'all i'm just like texting her and i'm just trying to figure out what the fuck going on i even wrote the bitch i even wrote the bitch al yep mm -hmm. i sure did not go to post the post um, hopefully I can find the message because I did block him since then. But I'll I'll post. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can find it. I'll post the message when I sent him because y'all was pissed. I was pissed, y'all. Okay, do y'all understand what I'm saying? I was pissed, and um, I couldn't believe it. Like I couldn't believe that anybody would physically put any type of hands on my mom to do that much damage. Like my mom, like yo what like, are you serious like are, what what possessed you what, why were you that angry like literally but yeah Al had me fucked up so I had to send him a nice little message and of course he didn't respond to it but I know he saw it mm -hmm. he sure did and y'all at this point I didn't give a fuck like what was going on like I told y'all I didn't give a fuck about none of the shit that my mom had made 
me feel. I didn't give about none of the shit that my mom had probably said in the past. Like, I didn't give a fuck. I was just focused on my mom being okay. And then I randomly get a call from a random number and it was my mom. And uh, I was so happy to, to hear from her and she was happy to hear from me as well. Like, I, I could tell like she was trying to keep her cool together because she literally haven't like hurt my voice or talked to me since the situation and, and that was over a year ago by this time and so um she was happy to hear from me and i was happy to make sure she was alive bitch so um at the time my mom was somewhere <laughs> which i'm gonna tell you what the fuck she was but i was like trying to figure out where she was because i was trying to figure out um like i could buy her a ticket to come out here because i was like literally prepared to buy her a bus ticket to come where i was she told me she was at a friend house and i didn't figure out who this friend was until later down the line come to find out she was at l's best friend's house how the fuck you i don't know this is super of my mama but i guess she ain't had no choice she ain't had nowhere else to go but i'm just like how the fuck you escape to your abuser's best friend's house like what the fuck whatever but apparently they was they was upset that he had did whatever the fuck he did to her too and they allowed her to be there and I was happy about her being there, but I'm just like, mama, like, I, I, you gotta get the fuck up out of here. Like, I gotta get you the fuck up out of here ASAP. Like, what are, what are we, we doing? Like, are you coming or what? And she was, she wasn't really giving me an answer. She was just like, I'm gonna let you know. I'm gonna let you know. I'm just like, okay, I'm ready to put, I'm prepared to buy you a ticket so that you can come out here and get away from that shit. But that didn't happen. So, a day later, my grandma called me that morning and was like, sounding so upset. My grandma, she's so dramatic at times. But she sounded so upset, and I'm just like, what's going on? And she's like, well, so-and-so, which is the lady that my mama was living with. I'm just going to call her so-and-so because her name is really irrelevant. And I don't even remember her name to begin with. But she was like, yeah, so-and-so called me and was like, you know, she woke up and your mama was gone. And she had stole some of her items, too. I'm like, what? She was like, yeah yeah so she repeated repeated what the fuck she told me and i'm just like so the person that my mom escaped to she decided to up and leave their house and not only up and up and leave but steal some of their items and the items that she stole was petty shit it was like alcohol um perfume like it was like petty shit petty shit like crackhead type of shit and i'm just like that don't even fucking make sense and so i'm calling her and I'm, of course i'm not getting no answer no response on facebook and i'm just like bro are you fucking kidding me like where the fuck is she like why would she just leave in the middle of the night and not tell anybody nothing and i'm just like all of a sudden i'm automatically worried again i'm, so I'm, just, I'm just like what the fuck happened what, what the fuck is going on like she just literally got her ass beat and now she's gone. I'm just like, yo, this is why she should have never went over there. This is why she shouldn't just, she just should just came home with me. She just should just did what the fuck I suggested, but she didn't want to do what the fuck I suggested. So now we in in this predicament. So now I'm worried. And so within a couple of maybe the next day, I'll, I'm like, I would say a couple hours, but I feel like it was the next day because I was worried for a long time, y'all. Oh my god, I was fucking. I was sick worried my mom like my grandma even posts on Facebook because she was that worried because she hadn't heard from her after that y'all when I tell you what happened next y'all gonna be like bitch I know you lying bitch I ain't gonna be lying when I tell y'all okay but bitch you have to wait to the next story time <laughs> For y'all to figure out what the fuck happened because bitch I'm tired of talking and my camera is actually blinking and I'm trying to hurry up and wrap this shit up. So if you don't want to miss out on what the fuck happens next because I told y'all we are wrapping it the fuck up like for real for real for real for real and it's getting juicy and y'all think this shit is juicy bitch it, it, it gets juicy or just one more notch maybe two more notches or it's a lot of notches that it's gonna go up to. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. Also hit that like button if you like this video. And tell me y'all what y'all think gonna happen next.